Hello, my name is Nils Pirma and today on Keyshot Next Tutorial we're gonna go over with Motion Blur as you can probably see what Motion Blur actually means and I'm gonna show you what actually I have done in the past uh, to actually uh, achieve this effect. So as you can see right here there is a moving scene, there's ground moving, and there's wheels moving. People try to match the backplate uh, with moving scenery, but they often have difficulties doing this. The reason being is they don't know how to animate this. And today I'm going to show you how you can easily do this motion blur, render it, and if we have time, and then do post-production to make it look cool. So I'm going to go straight on to Keyshot. As you can probably see, my scene is already uh, selected. I'm in performance mode. I'm in pause because I don't want to use CPU power as well, so it will scream out loud. So we're going to go right ahead and unpause this. And I'm going to show you the tricks on how to get started. So as you can see right here, if I turn into the performance mode, I get shadows. Without them, without, with performance mode enhanced, I'm going to uh, lose a little bit of ray tracing and here and there. And I'm going to lose shadow, so we won't use that much CPU power. So that's a tip number one. Actually, we'll do. Set, so second of all, you want to use camera. So you want to set, you set your car as center of the scene and as close as you can to the real end result you actually want to achieve. But for free around, sure, let's go ahead. So I want to make these wheels, these two wheels, turn. But I want to make sure that the brake calipers on these stay intact in the same place and everybody, everything else that goes around with these stay in place. Okay, but tip number two, we want to have our wheels straighten up. You don't, if, we, if we were going to have to add an animation, we're going to add an animation to a certain axis. And if that axis is off uh, by a fraction of an inch or... Uh, or an angle, then we will have a wheel basically doing figure of eights, and we do not want to have that. So what we're going to go over here is, as you can probably see, I have all my wheels separate. See? All of these wheels are separate. So we're going to take this wheel number three, and we're just going to go ahead and select the brake caliper. Now, we're going to put the brake caliper in another group so if the wheel is going to turn the brake caliper is not going to be affected that's tip number three you want always want to use brake calipers uh, off of the animation but there's a catch I'm going to turn this front wheel as well but before I do that I actually want to make sure that brake calipers are also in the right place so okay add to group uh, new group uh, rear caliper okay so I know for sure that this rear caliper route now is in the right group it's not being affected at all and basically when a wheel turns it's not going to be affected um, second of all let's go to the front one what I'm going to do here is that I'm going to actually turn the wheel to the right amount move Always use global so that everything is X, Y, and Z axis are always straight up. I want to have this wheel like this. So, because there is a corner in the scene, and if I select it, see, it goes to the corner. I'm going to turn performance mode on so you can actually see what I'm doing. Uh, so, their shadows are decent enough. The lights, you don't have to worry about this because this is only tutorial on how to make motion blur. I can really go on further on how to set up your HDRI as well with this scene, but I'm not going to bother with this today. Okay, so we're going to go back to performance mode. We're still going to select this. And now we know that brake caliper and the rotation of the wheel and uh, corresponding to the back plate is in the right spot. So we're going to take this yet again, add to group, make it a group, group uh, front. Cal caliper. 
you don't have to use underscores or anything. You just need to know on what you're doing. Uh, you can do it uh, to your own liking. Uh, the naming and adding to the group, sure. Yeah, do as as you as you want. There's no problem if you actually do some kind of alert kind of thing, which which best suits you. So we know the drag collector is right in the correct spot, and it won't turn. What we're gonna do is we're gonna straighten up the wheel back to its uh, original place, and we're gonna make sure that the wheel is actually dead center and flush with the body. So it, and when we actually put an animation onto it, we won't have any kind of defects. And right here, you can see, okay, the brake caliper here is gone. That's because we actually set it to another group, so it's not being affected when we actually eventually turn the wheel. Okay, so that's done. So now, we are going to go on, and we're going to take the first wheel, DC Forge. Uh, this is this one. We're going to make an animation. Rotation. Ignore these. These are my previous setups. We're just going to delete these. Yes. We're going to make a new animation. We're going to make a rotation. So that's the object turning. Let me go back ahead right now. Okay, so we're going to see where is it. Yes. RZ1. So that's the first wheel. There's always a hashtag after it. Uh, letting you know what kind of uh, wheel or what kind of object you have selected. So if there's an order, and uh, you can actually uh, you look at a model naming after this, and you can find it pretty easy. Now we're gonna go on to rotation, and we are here having settings. Uh, also in the settings menu, since we're actually in performance mode, we cannot select motion blur. But we're gonna go back into quality. We're gonna put motion blur on. And we're going to go around like 9,000 RPM. So when you actually see, and motion blur is on, you can also already see the wheel is actually turning. So that's a good sign. This is what we're actually trying to achieve. The, the wheel in the rendering window is going to turn. That's one of our uh, achievements over here done. But, no. Okay, so we've done the basic animation for 1 second, 9,000 revolutions per minute. But how can I get the wheel back? Now here's uh, here's the thing. We're gonna go move model, and we're gonna do the same increment that we did before. We're gonna make sure that the brake caliper is in the right spot because we added previously into a group. And let's see what happens here. Will it turn on the right axis? Yes, it does. So our setup is correct. Add to a group, uh, the caliper, put it away, and just let it do its thing. And as you can see by the motion, uh, animation, the center uh, hop cap is in the right spot. The spokes are going all over the place uh, on the right axis, as we said it previously in the animation. And the tire, and so is uh, the brake pad. I'm, I mean the brake disc. Is going also right direction and the brake caliper is staying in place. So that's the hard part done. Now let's go to the easy part. We're going to take a sec the second wheel, the rear wheel. We're just going to do move wheel or move model and we know for a fact that this is the BC Forge RZ1 second wheel. Now we're going to go to animation, rotation, they're gonna do the same thing all over again, but this time we're not gonna turn anything more besides the mo uh, on the model side. And we can see it's already rotating. The front wheel, front wheel is also rotating. And we just select OK here. Uh, actually, it, it was nece not necessary to actually push any kind of button on the scene as well in here. We just want to make sure that we actually have selected the correct model. And it will it would be kind of stupid if you have one side turning and the other one other one not if it's clearly seen in scene. Okay, so we're gonna go on animation rotation nine 
thousand. We're gonna drag it right into uh, right into here. We just have to un unselect that and let's let's look. So you can see already the real wheel is turning. This wheel is turning, and since since this wheel isn't seen really that much into the scene. We are just gonna put it almost close to the corresponding spot. So at least we have we're gonna have shadows. You don't have to be that specific. You don't have to turn every kind of wheel. If the scene is not if your if your geometry is not seen in the scene anyway, so you don't have to worry about that. Sorry about it. So let's go back. Okay, so let's set the camera to our previous setup. Okay, so we're gonna let it sit for a while. Around like, mm, let's say, twenty minutes. Uh, I mean, like one minute. Just don't worry about the HDRI or lighting or anything like that. You can basically see what I'm trying to achieve here. So that's the easiest way you can achieve motion blur wheels and on uh, on a motion blur backplane. That's the easiest way you can do it. Is and there's nothing more to it. Uh, you just need to render it on as maximum samples as you can and because you won't you usually render with these settings right you can this time because motion blur is not enabled in this uh, mode so we're gonna go with maximum samples and we're gonna put okay 256 samples we are gonna put it in uh, right, right around 2560 by 17 uh, 7 1708. So we're going to pause this and we're going to come right back after the rendering is done and we'll do a little bit of viewing how it actually turned out. Hello, so yet again I'm back uh, and this is just uh, actually after around like a couple of uh, uh, minutes, uh, usually like uh, 20 minutes. This is what actually turns out. So all these animations that you actually have uh, done in the past will actually in the end result if you render even more and even more samples it will actually be more defined but for demo purposes I did not go as far as that um, so you can see over here as well normally if it just be a normal uh, tire it will just sort of tire tread everywhere but right now it's looking pretty fine to me and this has been basically the tutorial on how to get motion blur done to the wheels if you have a motion blur background and you want, want to match the scene but you don't know how to get those motion uh, get the motion blur effect on the wheels so this has been a quick tutorial um, this is how you usually get these things done um, I sure hope that this was helpful helpful for you and next time we're actually going to do a post-production video on how to post product backplate plus and lighting and make sure that the body parts actually stay out so this time I'm gonna have to close and I'll see you in the next one so I hope this was helpful and bye